Hey friends, Kevin here, and today we're going to talk about the police in dealing with van life, RV life, van dwelling, being a nomad, whatever you want to call it. Because if you're in one of these, you're going to have to deal with the police at some point. I've had to do it several times. If you haven't yet, you will. And if you're thinking about going on the road, these are the things you need to know so you're not pulled over as much, you're not interrupted at night as much, and you know how to deal with it when it happens to you. So let's get to it. Now, we can talk all day about what is right and what is wrong. But what is right and what is wrong doesn't matter. What matters is reality. The reality of being on the road and having to deal with the police. So let me get this out of the way because I know people have different attitudes. 95% or better of the police officers are great people. You have that few percent that don't have a lot of experience. They're young. We all know there's some bad ones out there, but there's no point in putting everybody in one category because of a few bad ones. That's just life. It's not just the police. It's going to happen with any group of people in life good ones and bad ones. So we're going to talk about how to deal with all this. One of two things is going to happen to you. Either you're going to get pulled over or you're going to get that late night knock on the door. So let's talk first of all about being pulled over. If you've done something wrong, you're going to get pulled over. But sometimes you're going to get pulled over if you didn't do anything wrong. I read for years that Kansas was absolutely horrible. If you go through Kansas and you're from out of state, you're going to get pulled over. Guess what? The very first time I got pulled over, being coast to coast, being in 20 other states by that point, was Kansas. And it was for a complete BS reason that the police pulled us over on a trip. Supposedly, there was something with somebody else that had the same kind of car and was from the same state and they were pulling us over just to see if we, you know, we were the same kids that had moved there from our state with the same car and knew they needed to get their tags changed over to Kansas tags. Well, man, when you walked up to the car and you saw that I'm not the 20 year old guy you was working for, that should have been the end of it. But of course, we had to go through the dance while we were there, where we were going, blah, 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 you know registrations and all that. I don't think he bothered to run my license, but it was still yet just a waste of time and semi-aggravating. Regardless, this is part of it. It's going to happen anywhere because if you are traveling like we do and like a lot of people do and you're adventuring and you're, you're going places and seeing new places, you're the outsider. So get used to it. And the further away from home that you happen to be, the more likely you are to get pot. I can take you to a place in Virginia. If you roll through this town, you have out of state tags, you have darkened windows, you're going to get pot. You're going to get pulled over. And if you have any window tent on there that's aftermarket, they're going to write you a nice little ticket. It doesn't matter what the law is in your state that allows a darker tent, they're going to nail you because they know you're going to pay that ticket rather than drive 500 miles back there and spend the day in court to fight it. That's just reality. It's not right, but it's reality. There was another place in West Virginia that in the 90s was so bad, this county town area had a population of about 20,000 people and they gave out 50,000 speeding tickets one year enough to make the top 10 speed traps in the nation according to the USA Today newspaper. I know exactly where that place is and I know people that got popped there at that time. Again, not right, but it's reality. So you just have to accept it's one of the things that's going to happen when you're on the road. The good thing is it's simply not going to happen very often. I know I've put 18,000 miles at one point on that minivan I was pulled over one time. That doesn't count the, the mileage I put on other vehicles and that I put on the big van in the last few years. So the odds of it happening are very rare, but understand it can happen. The next thing that can happen is that late night 
knock on the door. And this is the really aggravating one to me because this causes you to be woken up, probably. It was in our case. Again, in Arkansas, completely crap reason. We're in an Army Corps of Engineers paid campsite, but we have a minivan. And everybody else in there has pretty nice pull-behinds and RVs, so it made us a target for the two cops that came through there at 1 a.m. on a weeknight and were bored and had nothing to do. There the next day that didn't have any authority, just came in there to do a day job and they said, hey, down that lower end, they have had some problems with somebody doing something they shouldn't have done, running off into the woods, the cop having to chase them. But for us, it was a completely BS reason. And again, if you have to do that, do that at 10 o'clock at night. Do that at 7 o'clock in the morning. You don't do that at 1 or 2 a.m. just to check. Oh, something looks suspicious. No, man, nothing looks suspicious. And I intended on going and making an appearance and having a talk with the sheriff, which I ask about, and the next question out of the mouth of that person was, oh, was it city or county? Well, dummy me really didn't pay attention because it was 1 o'clock in the morning. But... We had a long driving day planned the next day, something we generally don't do, and needless to say, I had a lot of trouble going back to sleep, felt like crap the next day. Again, this is just one of those things that you're going to have to deal with from time to time. So the question is, how do you put the odds in your favor so this doesn't happen to you? At least a lot. Let's talk about those. Again, we can all debate right and wrong all day long. But if you are in a newer, nicer, cleaner vehicle, you're going to be less likely to get pulled over than somebody in some old beat up, horrible looking vehicle. That's just the way it is. If I walk into a place in a three piece suit compared to this in my cargo shorts, I'm going to be treated differently. In the days that I was around the military, if I walk in a place in a military uniform compared to this in my cargo shorts, again, I'm going to be treated differently. More people are going to hold the door. More people are going to step out of the way. More people are going to smile at you. It's just the way it is. I don't necessarily agree with it either. And now that I'm running around in old shirts and tank tops and jerseys and, and stuff all the time, I laugh at the way I'm treated by people sometimes because they do kind of assume that I'm some kind of bum. I'm never going to see those people again. It really doesn't matter to me. So, what do you think about these issues? I want to hear it down in the comments. If you've been out on the road, have you had run-ins with the police? I want to know about that and your story down in the comments. Let's get a conversation started. We'll talk soon.